Hey YouTube, uh, so we're in the springtime now and a lot of folks are going to want to take their RVs out, bikes, kayaks, all the other toys that come with them. Uh, so recently I put this kayak rack slash bike rack on here. It's pretty easy to build these. I actually found one that somebody else already built online but I had ordered the parts when I actually found this one so I was, gonna, I was planning on building one myself. This one was already done. Um, I knew exactly how much the parts were and the gentleman I bought it from was really nice and sold it to me for you know a little over what he what it took for him to, to actually build it. So it saved me some time and it's a lot cheaper than some of those other racks out there that will cost you an arm and a leg and basically do the same thing. So what you'll need for this is a total of three pieces. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon, have them delivered and it should cost you around 250 bucks, maybe a little less uh, to get all three of those pieces. So what you're going to need is this rack, obviously, standard hitch mounted storage rack goes into your two inch receiver. You're also going to need this piece here, this tall piece, That's um, that tall piece is a bed extender uh, that you would put on the back of your pickup in the two inch hitch and uh, it would extend your bed so you can carry a kayak uh, horizontally. Um, they're made to mount in different configurations, so if you wanted to use that same rack to, say, mount a ladder on the top of your truck, you could do that. Uh, if you wanted to carry it, to carry a kayak long ways, then you would just reconfigure it and you can carry the kayak long ways. I'll put the parts list that you'll need. Uh, there's, there's obviously a few options. Uh, and then the third part that you're going to need is this hitch receiver. And I actually really like the way that this is mounted because it avoids this bar getting too close to this to this rack here so he basically mounted it in reverse you can drill a hole here and just put a pin in but they actually welded it i may put a pin in here just for uh, safety but it's not going anywhere it's really close to the rv as you can see i could barely even get a finger in there but it is sturdy i mean it's not going anywhere um even if you hit a big bump you might get a little bit of wobble but it's not it's not gonna hit the RV and if it does, it touches that tail light. I'm not too concerned, lesson learned at that point. So that's basically it. And then you have this rack that goes all the way up to the top. And then what he did was he just welded four bars on. They're not the most sturdy bars, but you're not using them to actually support the weight. I'll put a picture up here of how I have my kayak mounted in here. And then you'll notice I have this pulley here. That's just if I want to, if I have a second hand and I want to get some of the weight off of the kayak. I have an Old Town Sportsman PDL. Uh, it's not the lightest kayak in the world. I think it's like 83 pounds, 85 pounds. Yeah, that's just a bear kayak. So not the lightest. The biggest thing is just kind of awkward. So using that pulley gets a little bit of the weight off there. But what you want to do here is just cut the rack down the center. That gives you a little bit of a safety area where if you do bottom out for whatever reason you'll bottom out on the grate first so you're not gonna you're not gonna hit the nose of the kayak depending on what kayak you have it might stick through a little bit further mine is it's pretty blunt so mine doesn't even come I mean, it barely it barely gets in there some of the other ones that you can buy you'll see they have a metal piece that actually comes down here so you can always add a piece of sheet metal to really protect the nose of the kayak I don't think it's really necessary for me. Um, you can see this is pretty high up. I mean, I have my RV on the jacks right now, but even without the jacks, it's still a good uh, two feet off of the ground. So this is the side that I really use for my kayak. I have some extra cushions here. Um, and these are just foam noodles. This, this black piece, this is actually for piping. Uh, for water pipes that you would have outside, exposed water pipes. And I just uh, cut it this way. It already has a slit down the middle, so then I just wrapped it around there. You can use a pool noodle too. And then I may actually put another piece here just for when I have the kayak sitting here. Um, I can, I won't have to, I won't damage it as much. Really good idea. I mean, this, this whole setup, when I ordered it, I actually found the rack which I still have I haven't returned it yet I need to, I'm probably just gonna hang on to it at this point um, but I bought the rack on Amazon warehouse and I think that was 
around 80 bucks. So if you're patient, you can find one of the warehouse deals that are previously open. If you just want to order it outside of the warehouse deals, I want to say they run 130 bucks, depending on what type. There's tons of different types of these. You just want to make sure you get the larger uh, rack because they have some that are a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, narrower. The whole thing is just a smaller configuration. Those won't work very well uh, for what we're trying to do here. And then it'll hold a good amount of weight. So you can see on this, on this particular hitch adapter, the weight limit is 350 pounds. Um, my actual hitch, I want to say, is rated for 500 uh, tongue weight, 500. Um, so it's got plenty there. The limitation is basically that 350 pounds. So that would include this rack, the storage rack on the top and then also your kayak in here. I have some other stuff for the RV, some firewood that I can stack on top and then just use a strap to go across. The one that you can buy online has a beam that goes across to kind of secure your kayak in there. I just use that strap. So that strap I just wrap around the kayak when I, once I have it in there and then I'll hook it on the uh, center beam and it holds it nice and snug. It doesn't wiggle at all. One downside obviously is if you have a rear view camera, it's going to impede some of your vision, but you can't actually see the vehicle, uh, the vehicles behind you um, because it's not directly in the center. But it does impede some of your vision, which obviously would be expected. For me, I have an uh, Old Town Sportsman PDL 106, so it's 10, 10 feet 6 inches long. And I specifically got a kayak that length because I knew I was going to be carrying it on an RV. I didn't want to reduce my clearance height uh, any more than it already is. So right now with the kayak on the RV, it, the, the tail of the kayak meets up with the top of the air conditioning unit. So that's perfect. If I would have gotten uh, the 12 footer, it would have reduced my clearance by about a foot and a half. If you get rid of the storage in the center, then you can put the two bikes in the center and they carry two kayaks as well. Um, so a ton of different configurations you can do when you carry it. All right, well, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, other than that, uh, I'll see you later. Thanks, YouTube.